Greetings viewers, NYC Resistance. And today I'm on 125th Street in Harlem. And I come across these three NYPD cops that have just stopped this man. So they are um, walking back over to this spot right here. And then the questioning begins, you know, probably where you going, where you coming from. How, do you have any warrants? Have you ever been arrested before? That's the stuff they ask me when they stop me. They always, they always want to know what they can um, link you to. Where have you previously been and um, how, how many times have you been arrested? So if you say, you know, yeah, I've been arrested before. Now they know that you're easy, you're easy prey because you have no credibility. It doesn't even matter whether you've been found guilty or not. They just want to know, have you ever been arrested before? That way, when they drag you in front of court, your word means nothing because you have um, a, a previous encounter with the law. You know, they like to they like to say that people had multiple run ins with the law. No, the law had multiple run ins with you because most time you're minding your own business as this man was doing when he was stopped by these three officers. You know, this this female cop, she seen him from all the way across the street and I seen her. She she pointed over there and then they all walked over. You know, now she has his um ID in her hand and um she's about to get on the walkie talkie and um see if she could, you know, bring him in for any warrants. You gotta remember like when a when a poor black or Latino person or when they have a warrant, you know, don't don't ever think it's for murder. Don't ever think it's for like doing anything serious because they, they wouldn't be able to afford to bail themselves out of jail. You know, like the warrants that most poor people have are like for like an open container of beer or, you know, riding your bike on the on the sidewalk or littering and you just didn't show up at court. And then you have a warrant for your arrest. So when you see somebody has a warrant, don't always think don't don't always think that it's some dangerous criminal that you know murder somebody. That's what they want you to think, so they can um, steal your tax dollars and say, you know, we need your tax dollars to cage this person, you know, in a corporate-owned prison. And then you just say, yeah, you know, um, take as much as you need, you know, if it means me being safe, take take all my tax dollars. Meanwhile, the schools are closing and hospitals are closing and you know everything else. So the female cop. You know, who, who's very aggressive, you know. Um, after this encounter right here, I watched her, I mean, stare every young black boy up and down. You know, I should have recorded it, but I didn't. So, um, you know, CD, I'll take my word for it or, or don't. But every young black male that, that walked by, she stared them from top to bottom. And what was so, so wrong about this is that if she didn't have that police uniform on and a gun on her waist, she would never be acting in this manner. You know, never in a million years. The NYPD highest people that are traumatized, um, were bullied, were picked on, mistreated, ignored, shunned, avoided. And they put them in a police uniform. You know, sometimes the uniform could barely fit them. You know, this, this female officer has her pants legs rolled up four or five times because the pants are oversized. She's barely five feet tall, but just looking to get into people's faces and, and destroy their day. Someone who isn't happy with themselves, there's no way they could go out in the streets and, and make people happy. They're looking to upset people. They, they're looking to exact their power on them, you know? Nothing would delight her more than for the person on the other end of that radio to, to say, yes, yes, he has a warrant, handcuff, handcuff him and bring him in. That way, you know, she has an arrest that goes towards her quota. You know, that's what a police officer's career is com comprised of. How many arrests they make. Not how many lives they saved or how many people they helped, but how many people did they incarcerate and how many summonses and tickets did they write to generate money for the criminal the criminal system? And how many bodies did they put into the, the prison industrial complex? That's all a police officer's career is. When they retire, they say, yeah, this person was, the person made over 300 arrests in there or five, whatever it is, 1,000, who, who knows? That, but they always mention how many arrests a police officer made. And don't think it's so it's it's always dangerous people. But anyway, this is where a lot of the crime comes from because they take poor people. You see, yeah, he's drinking out a, a paper bag, so we can assume there's an alcoholic beverage in there. So some of y'all are gonna say, okay, um, yeah, um, drinking in public is against the law. What's the, you know, what's the problem with that? You know, he he broke the law. He was he was drinking, you know, drinking alcoholic beverage in public. But the thing is, you know, first of all, it's in a paper bag. How do they know? How do they how they they know it's not a soda? You know, but they always assume that if you have a paper bag or a styrofoam cup, 
it's something illegal in there. But if I go down to Midtown Manhattan, I can find white people on any given day of the week just walking around with big bottles of liquor exposed. No paper bag, no styrofoam cup, not even a plastic cup. You know, because they realize that they're free. You know, if, if you live in a certain tax bracket or a certain or zip code, um, you're going to be left alone by the NYPD. But when you're poor, they're going to always want to, want you to prove to them that you're not doing anything wrong. You know, white people, for the most part, are left alone to enjoy their enjoy their paychecks or their earnings. You know, whether it be at a baseball game, a hockey game, skydiving, rock climbing um, on safaris swimming with sharks and then you know get eaten and wonder why uh you know uh a shark ate you you know all sorts of stuff like that where it's very adventurous for us just to you know for black people just to go outside and, and walk down the street and enjoy your day you know and then you and then you turn on the nightly news and you wonder why people are, are robbing stores and snatching purses and, and jumping over counters and then and doing all all sorts of stuff like that because you don't see the extortion you don't see the people that you know are ticketed you know by police officers that that admittedly have quotas we have multiple cops that I mean I mean good cops that have come forward and say yes we have quotas yes we have to write um, 20 25 summonses and make one arrest every single month that's why towards the end of the month you see a lot of people getting pulled over every other block there's somebody getting getting stopped and pulled over because they got quotas you see what I'm saying? These cops have been placed on this corner right here. Not to patrol and walk around the neighborhood and look for crime. That's what they say. They That's what they tell you on the news that they're going to be doing. Walking around, making sure everything is safe. Checking on shop owners. Hey, everything's all right. Any problems today? They don't do that. They get dropped off by vans on a corner. And they're made to extort everybody that, that they could, could possibly extort. And write these tickets. This is a business. Raymond Kelly said... Yes, the NYPD is is a business. I couldn't believe that there was an outrage after that. He said the NYPD is a business. And it's clear that it's operating just like a business. You know, random people are stopped. I mean, if, if you throw a piece of garbage away and it misses the, the trash can, you get a ticket for littering. You know, you don't even have an opportunity to pick it up. It's not like they say, all right, um, you, you know, we, I know we're in a recession. I know we're in a, in a depression. How about you pick that up? If you refuse, if you want to be a badass now, you deserve the ticket. But at least have the opportunity to pick it up and throw it away and not have to show up at, at criminal court where real criminals that try to hurt other people should be. You know, not people that aren't drunk, you know, drinking out of a, a, a paper bag, at least having the decency to try to hide it. I see, you know, I see white boys in, in their neighborhood drinking alcoholic beverages. Nobody's bothering them. You know, why sell it in the store if it's so illegal? Why, why, sell, why sell things in the store? And then the second somebody steps foot outside the store, there's a cop waiting for you to give you a ticket. And the only people that have to worry about it is like Middle Eastern people, Latino people. And black people for the most part. I mean, I have seen white people get summon, summons, but... Very rarely, very very seldomly. For the most part, when you work your money, you can make plans for your paycheck. We can't make plans for our paycheck. Our paycheck go ends up going to the criminal justice system or the sanitation or the traffic courts or somewhere. Somewhere. And then, and then wonder why we're poor and, 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 and people have to turn to welfare because work, you know, working a regular job doesn't work out for some people. That job cannot afford to pay your bills, put good food in your table, and still pay the police um, sanitation department when you you put bottles in the wrong bag and then you know the traffic court when you when you get these parking tickets you know you're like two inches away from the fire hydrant they give you a ticket it's crazy just the other day I seen I, I mean I could go on and on I, I mean so here it is I mean we, we have this guy he I mean he doesn't look like he doesn't look like the richest guy in the world but here he is getting a getting a summons you know, for, for drinking that beverage because the cop came up to him and said, what's in that, I guess she said, what's in that paper bag or, or what's in that paper bag that you was in? She walked him right back over to it. And now he's getting a ticket after she ran him for warrants. And I just want to show y'all folks that a lot of black people that, that are poor to begin with are being made to pay tickets and summonses that they don't have. So when you watch 
when you watch the nightly news and you see some black person robbing somebody, you know, just just know that it's not necessarily an evil person. It's not necessarily a bad person. You know, sometimes people are be, be are placed in positions where they have no other choice, or they're literally starved to death. Mayor Bloomberg said, "You know what happens when people get hungry." You know, of course we know what happens when people get hungry. They they do things out of desperation. They do things they wouldn't normally do because they're going to starve to death or their little baby at home is going to starve to death. And in, a, in, in this economic climate, the city of New York doesn't seem to care because everybody's being ticketed in summonses from, from businesses to taxi cabs to, to street vendors to, to everybody. They're getting ticketed these absurd amounts, $1,000 tickets for not putting the, the, the proper price tag on an item in the store for, for one item. Restaurants being being raided and extorted. People being forced out of business. So where, where, where are they supposed to turn after that to eat? Of course the only option is to turn to crime. That That's what you're supposed to do. That's the world we live in. It, it's set up for you to fail. It's set up for you to do crime. It's set up for you to, be, to pay tickets. That way Everybody who has something to do with the court system, they get they get richer and richer. You know, the court officers, the court judges. You know, they, they drive around in luxury cars and, um, you know, off your backs. But you can't see it. You're, you're made to feel like it's your fault. You did something wrong. You know, it's, it's your fault you lost your business. It's your fault you lost your house. It's your fault you're sleeping on a park bench. But they don't show you the, you know, um, the city's form of rehabilitation. It's extortion. You know, pay this ticket or there'll be a warrant issue for your arrest, which means you'll lose your freedom. You'll be placed in a dingy prison cell. The taxpayers will have to pay if you can't pay. And that's the sum of your life if you're black, Latino, or poor, period. You see, now he's going to walk off wondering how, how, how am I going to pay this ticket? They don't care, you know. The, the van that dropped them off is going to, you know, here, you know, here's the van. Van that dropped them off on the corner to extort people. Hey, how many tickets have you wrote? Huh? Let, let me see your notepad. Oh, you're doing a good job. You know, I want that court line wrapped around the corner tomorrow morning. I want to keep the, the judge real busy. That way there'll be a promotion in it for me. And I'll put in a good word for you. So five years down the line, you'll be, you could be a sergeant too. If you keep on extorting these people and creating crime, you know. The NYPD needs crime to validate their existence, to demand more and more tax dollars from you. So this is how they go out and create it. You know, how you gonna have how you how you gonna have a good day? How you gonna think straight? How you gonna think positive when you just got summonsed? And now you have a date. You have two weeks to show up at criminal court and answer for that ticket. You think the judge is gonna say, hey, put out your hand and hit you with a ruler and say, don't do that again and send you back out into the street, or is he gonna tell you the summons is a hundred? $150 plus a $50 surcharge, I guess because you called me sir or you called the officer sir, and then he gives you two weeks to pay, go see the cashier. You see, you got two weeks to answer for the ticket, then the judge gives you two weeks to pay. So within one month, they're going to get some, some money out of you in one way or another. Then you have these long lines wrapped around the corner of all these people that want to clear their names. These aren't criminals. The people on criminal court line aren't criminals because criminals, they don't go to court. They go on the lam. Citizens that want to have a cl have a clean name and be a productive member of society, they show up at court so they don't have any anything looming over their head. They want to be able to travel freely, so they go and they answer these these tickets and these summonses, you know. And then once you answer, you put your you're putting yourself into a contract with them to pay them, you know. That that's what it is. How do you plead? You know, there's no criminal complaint because most of the time you didn't do anything. You didn't hurt anybody. You didn't do anything to anybody. That's what court court and all this stuff was supposed supposed to be about. That's what police was supposed to be about to protect you from malicious and evil people. But no, they made it about, oh, everything's for your safety. You know, put that seatbelt on, you know, um, don't drink that beer. You know, we'll advertise a, a, a car that can do spin outs and drift and go 160 miles per hour. But don't you dare drive your car over 65 miles per hour. You see, I'm saying that like you go go in the store and buy this and that. You step outside, you get arrested. You could buy a pocket knife in the store and step outside, you know, with this pocket knife you just bought legally and then get arrested for a pocket knife. So, I mean, like we, we really got to evaluate what sort of system that we're living in and what type of world we're going to 
give our kids to inherit. I could just imagine what a police officer that really doesn't want to do this, you know, like he wants to give somebody a break, but then he's like, damn, but I have this quote. I got to I gotta write something in my notepad or it's going to look like I'm not doing any work. You know, I mean, when you help somebody, there's no record of that help. When you hurt somebody, then, then that's when you have a, a carbon copy, a, a receipt or a printout in your notepad. So it's like, you know, these cops have to write tickets. Um, listen, guys, my last video, um, you guys really, really stepped up. You guys, um, y'all rated, y'all rated the videos. You, you commented, you started sharing the videos. People donated. Y'all show me a lot of love, man, and I appreciate that. I mean, anybody like, like as you can see, like, um, I'm not doing it for the personal credit. You know, this is about all of us. This is about like the world that we leave to our children because if, if we condition them to be you know, just to accept anything, they're going to they're going to be on track to being slaves. And we don't want that for our kids. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we really don't want that. Our, our elders, they know what freedom is. What we're experiences, experiencing now is just a shadow of freedom. If we allow this to continue, our, our children will think that servitude and bondage is freedom. Everything y'all have been doing, the donations are going to help me to more focus on making videos and not worrying about finances and all that other stuff. So I definitely appreciate the donations. If it's even a dollar, I know times are hard for a lot of you and um, that's totally understandable. But, you know, if it's even a dollar, it, it all adds up and I could do more, more and more things. I really want to go out there and engage, engage the youth. Somebody say, hey, NYC Resistance, why don't you talk about black on black crime? I want to make a video about that. You know, I, I, I want to make a video about black on black crime. I want to address that. Let's talk about that. But we got to we got to go way back. You see, what I'm saying we got to go way back to something that you keep telling me to forget. We got to go back to slavery now. You see, what I'm saying it's not just going to start with just us, us gang banging and shooting each other. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a point when we didn't have any guns. There was no crack. You see, what I'm saying so we're going to have to go back to the beginning. But if I try to go back to the beginning, you're going to say, hey, forget about that. Let's not talk about that. Let's remember 9-11. Let's remember um, Sandy Hook. You know, let's remember the Boston bomb and you want to remember everything that you want to remember about that strips Americans of their freedom. But what stripped us of our freedom, you don't want to talk about. So, you know, if we're going to have a discussion about black on black crime, we got to we got to go back to how black people were trained to hate themselves to where they can see another black person and kill and take that black person's life and are less likely to kill a white person. Where does that come? Where does that come from where we have no respect for each other? But we have all the respect from for white people and we'll barely kill them. You know, these bad drug dealers, every every movie you see, you know, these drug dealers, they'll kill each other. Right. But when the cop comes banging on the door, what does the drug dealer do? What does that drug dealer do that just killed a black person that that morning or yesterday? What does he do? He runs. Right. He flushes all the drugs down the toilet and then drops the gun and, and starts heading towards the fire escape. He runs away. Right. Because that's how y'all programmed us to do. You programmed us to run from the police, to run from white people through the movies. You call them television programs. When you interrupt the shows, what, what do you say when you come back? We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. And that's what television and movies are programming. That's what this gangster rap music is programming. But I want to make a full video about that. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm just giving you a, a brief interlude of what, what we're going to be talking about. So get ready. All you people that want to change the subject away from police extorting us and harassing us traumatizing us train us training us to to feel like like prisoners in our own neighborhood and when we come into your neighborhood we got a call that there's a suspicious person walking around here you don't want us in your neighborhood so all the most of these cops they don't they don't live in the places that they so-called protect and are keeping safe you know I, i'll never see any of these officers while i'm shopping in the supermarket or at the movie theater or at the library because you live 50 miles away because you don't want black people and Latino people in your neighborhood, but you come down here under the false pretenses that you're here to keep people safe. So we're gonna address all that. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. You understand me? We're gonna talk about slavery. We're gonna talk about black Wall Street. We're gonna talk about how black people were, the family structure and how it was broken down through movies and, and materialism and, and entertainment and giving all the athletes millions of dollars and, and we're going we're gonna to talk about it. So with that, y'all take care.